while York fans have filled up this side of the York Gymnasium. Seats about 2,000 or so. York with an enrollment over three. Right off of St. Charles Road in Elmhurst, Illinois. Beautiful brick building. Hosting this holiday tournament now for 39 years. And the rebound corralled by David Cohn. Stanley Roberts out to Rose at the top of the key. Down to Tui in great position. He'll go to the line. Followed by Sotos. And it'll be Frank Tui to the line. Averaging eight and a half a game in this holiday classic. Five boards. He's had a lot of nice assists as well. Setting up Justin Koresh in that high post area. Tui makes the second. Six to one, York. 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. McBride thought about it, dished it off. Back up top to Ronaldo, who lost the handle. Cone on his tail. Guarded by Justin Koresh, and so they'll back up. Coming away right here, the Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament, 38th annual event, the championship game. You see the Larkin Royals taking on the Elgin Maroons. Royals 13-2, the Maroons are, as you know, as we look over here, Brian. Brian Gieske here will be joined by Kyle Bolton just a little bit as well. We'll have our national anthem right now, as a matter of fact, for the big championship game. Barely squeaking by. Ari Williams had 39 points in that. Good. And you can watch it on High School Cube and replay if you want, anytime you want. That's from that December 12th. Kyle Ball should be a fun one tonight. Absolutely. You know, and, and who would have thought, as we talked earlier, the 121st meeting actually happened during the holiday tournament. 
We, we didn't expect that to happen until late January when they would meet up again. But what a great matchup talking to both uh, Darren Carter and Mike Sitter before the game. They're both going with their starting lineups as last night, Jeff. And again, just one word describes it. It's Elgin Larkin. Who knows, you know, all the emotion is there. Anything you want from an Elgin Larkin game, it doesn't matter what the record, what, what, what gym it's in, all the emotion is right there. One word, emotion is everywhere you want it to be with these two teams. No question about that. And uh, Brandon, we're using some of your troops from Beacon Academy. You're a Beacon Academy South Elgin lad. Doing a nice job here. We appreciate that. And we've got our camera crew out there. This should be a night to remember, basketball wise. This should be a great game. I'm expecting a barn burner. It's going to go to the, down to the very end. These teams are, it's going to get heated in here. A huge student section from both squads. It's going to be loud in this arena tonight. Andrew Jones being introduced right there, number 14. Quantes Hunter also starting for the Royals. We're going to see uh, Braden Royce draw that starting assignment. Same five as we saw last night as well for the Royals case. And also Kendall McCullum, number 10, out there for Darren Carter's troops. For the Maroons, it would be Malik Dunner. It would be Tanner Bednar, Eric Sedlak, and, of course, Ryan Sitter and Ari Williams are your guards. We're just about ready, Kyle. And Isaiah Butler says he feels it just like he did last night. So we'll see what happens with him when he comes off the bench for the Maroons. All right. We are ready to go. Exciting it is. A lot of folks will be standing up all the way. We do have the great student section from both schools. Great fans here from all over Elgin. We're enjoying that right now. And we're ready to go, aren't we? And it brings out everybody from U46. Dr. Torres, I was over talking to him. He was a great matchup here tonight. Dr. Tuan, obviously, from uh, Larkin High School. Sedlak for a uh, jump center with Andrew Jones, and we're getting ready to go. Maroons are the road team. They're in their maroon and cream unis. The Royals in their blue and white uniform. Tip control is taken there by, by Ruff. Ruff gets some help back to Kendall McCullum. McCullum, the junior, guarded by Ari Williams. McCullum. Right side he is now. Cullum will bring it down. We're going to be tippy-toeing over the crowd as well here tonight. Out on top of Royce. Royce spin move, top of the key. Dish it backwards to McCullum. McCullum with Ariana. Needs some help. We've just begun. Good D by the Maroons. McCullum throws it away and does. Maroons bring it up. What a crowd we have here. We need to be seven foot tall. Where's Ralph Sanson when you need him? Brandon, you can see, can't you? I'm, I actually am having somewhat of a struggle to see. Well, He's was, shorter than me. <laughs> I can't help I know done. he's struggling. No one's smaller than Kyle. Here we go. Sitter in backcourt. Sitter again rolled his ankle in game one of the tournament. Came back yesterday. Here's Sedlock winning shot last night. Tanner Bednar battling Bednar to Ari Williams. The weave out on top. He's going to be guarded by Ruff. Ari is. Bounce it. Sedlock. Eric gets closer. Uh, jumper from the side, no good. Rebound, Jones had it, lost it, taken by Royce. Quickly up court it is. It's going to Quantes Hunter. Hunter at 32 in the first game. Jones to McCullum. No score after one minute, fellas. Everybody enjoying the intensity here at the big field house at Elgin High School. As Elgin takes on Larkin for the 121st time, but never, never in this venue. Tournament championship here. Down deep, Royce up and in. He's got the first two. I really like what Larkin's doing right off of the gate on offense. They're feeding it inside to their big men and trying to out-muscle this Elgin squad. Tonight's officials, Jim Ford, Dave King, and Dave Lanning. Tonight's PA, Sean Snow, and the official score, Dave Forrester. Braden Royce at the line, first two points of the night. This one's good. Royce is a... Man up front, really, for the Maroons. Inbounding, backcourt pressures, Ari Williams. Ari Williams goes to battling Bednar. Tanner, yeah! Mom said score some points tonight, and he does. And just like we were talking out beforehand, when talking with Mom, she said, hey, lay that thing up there a little bit harder, will you? And he does it. 3 2, it is off balance. McCullum, no. Ari Williams aboard. Here comes Ari. Ari went over the 1,000 career mark in points earlier this week at the tournament. Backward just said like land of three for Eric. Short. Rebound. Taken down by little Ari Williams at 5-9. Set up shop again to Badlin Bednar. He traveled. He headed for the hoop, but Tanner Bednar travels. Turnover by the Maroons. Already in the first two minutes, this place is very intense. Everyone on their feet already. It's going to be a barn burner here. It is indeed a night to remember the city of Elgin, Illinois, here for the 38th Annual Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. McCullum, dish it now, he will, to Ruff. Ruff will lob it to Andrew Jones. Andrew, the wing popper, no rebound. How about Ari Williams? Two boards. 
Why not? Williams will bring it up far side, being greeted there defensively by Rafa Wing Popper. R.A. Williams for two. 4-3 the count is. Down deep, Andrew Jones. Jones puts it up and in. Andrew now with two points. And that count right there. Let's have the scoreboard catch up. I saw Andrew put that in, but we got the, the 5-4 count there. 5-4 it is on the scoreboard. There's Sitter. Ryan Sitter will bounce it to Bednar. Bednar to Sedlak. Sedlak will get it now to Sitter. Sitter will get to Ari Williams. Ari Williams dribbles back and forth. Ari Williams land up three. Williams no. Sedlak the board. Eric puts it up and in. Eric Sedlak for two. It's a 6-5 count. 6-5 count it is. The scoreboard has the Maroons on top. So I had two more points for Jones, so we'll keep that scoreboard with the Maroons leading by one, 6-2-5 at the 4.57 mark. It's going to be foul on number 21 of the Elgin squad. Malik Dunner with that foul, the 5-11 sophomore for the Maroons. McCollum will inbound to Quantis Hunter, who is fouled. I'm all right. We got fans up in the right in front of us here. They're enjoying everything. Stand it up. So Hunter will go to the line. Quan Tees had 32 in the game last time out. On December 12th, he's shooting right into, we'll see this a little bit, he's shooting right into the Larkin fandom, the Larkin student section there. And they're enjoying that, so Hunter will have one point. They're rooting him on there. There's a good look at Quan Tees. With the backdrop of the wall of Hall of Fame, which hits all right behind him. Second one good. He's got two. We've got more cameras than the Kennedy inauguration here on this night, don't we, Cal? Yes, we They're do. everywhere. 7 6 it is. That's a lead by the Royals, reversed by Sitter. No, taken down by Ruff. Ruff in the lane. Shot. No, but he's fouled. Quinton Ruff will go to the free throw line. Right away on that rebound off of the block. Ruff looking to run towards the Larkin student section, seeing strength in numbers. That's right, looking for familiar colors. Well said there, Brandon. And in DC with us, Kyle Ball, here's Shirley Jeff Myers. Our producer, Jeremy Hayes, and the Beacon Academy crew, Mario and the troops right here for this special championship cast on High School Q. 7-6 it is. We were able to record in between games a segment with the Allen twins and have that for you in some capacity in the future. This one is going to be good after he missed the first. He's got one point. And what a great regiment. I'll tell you about what their daily life is like, Jeff. 8-6 it is. We have just a brief conversation with him. We ran out time-wise. Tanner Bednar, Bednar, far side to Ryan Sitter. Sitter brings it back out to Sedlock. Sedlock near side to Ari Williams. Ari land of two long rims. No, Sedlock board. Eric, no. Tapped out, taken down by McCullum. Kendall in a gallop. Kendall will go all the way. Shot, no. Rebound Maroons. Here comes Ari Williams. Williams, double team, spins around, bounce around. He gets it to Kiko Mario's in there now. And we hear a whistle before that. Maroons trail by 286, 407. First quarter remaining. That's what's, that's what's going to be the key for Larkin in this matchup. If they can stop the dribble drive of Ari Williams, if they can shut down Ari Williams, they'll be able to shut down this Maroon squad. Ari will inbound. Williams has two points on the night. Again, uh, Butler's in there now, and also Kiko Mari, he'll take a shot almost in there to Ari. It's got to be a little bit quicker on that release. Yeah, Ari Williams will take a tumble, shovel the foot, uh, almost like a football fumble, but it's a turnover. Once he went down, couldn't get rid of it. What can you do if you move, you're in trouble. Turnover by Ari. There's a good look at Ari. 1,000 plus points in his maroon career now. 8 6, mark it on top. It went 2 2 overtimes. Last time they met, as you know by now, McCullum, Andrew Jones. Jones. In trouble, backward dish to the near side now. He'll go to Ruff. Ruff, a long jumper is going to be good. Three. Ruff, 4 3. Good call, Kyle. And he's got four points out. Quentin Ruff, 11 6. Larkin, there's a steal. A steal by Royce. He'll get it to Ruff, who puts it in. 
and a timeout for Elgin. 3.20, first quarter remaining. It is going to be a count of 13 to 6. Larkin on top. We're going to take a quick timeout. If you guys didn't know, Dodge Dart is a proud sponsor of the Elgin Holiday Tournament. Lease a Dodge Dart for as low as $149 a month. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. All right, we're back, 13 to six, fellas. Larkin, the big early lead. Yeah, Eight. Larkin's been really out on the break, getting great fast break points from Quentin Ruff. He's really hit a switch here, hitting a three and then getting out on the break. A steal by Royce triggered Ruff's great plan, the break. All no, right. no lead is ever safe in an Elgin Larkin. That's game. right, well said, Kyle Ball. Here we go, back to action. Harry Williams with it, got it by Quentin Ruff. All right. Dip D do across the top. My double team, he'll get it now to Kiko to Sedlak for three hours. Sedlak with three. Nice shot that time. He's got that long basket right there. 13-9, we'll count it now. McCullum, Kendall in the lane. Pretty shot. McCullum with two. 15-9. Here comes Ari. Ari, shovel shot. No rebound taken down by Larkin. It is going to make McCullum again. Bouncing he does to Ruff. Ruff in the traffic, throws it away. Off the fingertips of Andrew Jones. 15-9, Larkin on top. Fast-paced action, fellas. 2.38, first quarter remaining. And as you well know, Jeff, as long as Larkin pressures Ari in that backcourt, he didn't do well the last time they played each other. But I'm surprised they're not keeping more pressure on the Maroons like they did the first match. Sedlak, Eric to Ari. I make it to Butler. Butler will lose the handle, goes out of bounds. Oh, and it stayed right there. And it's gotten by Quantese Hunter, who's fouled hard. That'll cause some hoots. That's Isaiah Butler, the six-foot junior off the bench. A solid foul, if you might, Kyle. It's going to be a charge, actually, on oh, Hunter. We'll take that. If you're the Maroon fan, I could go either way. So there we go, 15-9. The crowd's reacting well either way. As a CMU man, and he is right here at the field house in Elgin. Championship game of the 38th annual Elgin Holiday Tournament. A matchup never done here at the tournament site. The championship game, there's a steal, put up and in by Ruff. Ruff with eight. J.D. Dark is in there now, he's told that. 17-9, Larkin has lots of uh, weapons, as you know, Kyle and Brandon. Ari Williams, cross the timeline. Let's see if he can set up in the Ari Williams style now. Spin move, in the lane, shovel shot. No, it gets it to Butler. Butler for three. No good air ball. Mare Kiko is going to be knocked out. Foul it is. He had a couple of Larkin players just jumping on his back. Should be on JD the foul for the Royals. Inbound area their own hoop. It's Ari Williams. JD Drake. That is a Drake for JD out there. And here we go. And another loss. Underneath the sea of humanity, you lost it right there. You saw it at home real well. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago about keeping the pressure on the Maroons. They have a hard time getting that ball across the half court. All right, sir. Here we go, 17-9 Royals. Crowd enjoying this venue, to say the least. Familiar foes, but this is a marquee stage. Happy to be born here on High School Cube and Beacon Academy. Dribble drive into the lane right through it. Goes 3D, land of three, rough. We hear a whistle away from the shot. See what they call right here. What did you guys see? That's I didn't see much. It's going to be uh, going against the Royals. The Maroons will take the ball out. Here's a good look at Ari walking right into your mobile unit, isn't he? Old number 10 right there. Shake hands with Ari Williams. Great star for the Maroons. Brother was a great star as well, graduating five seasons ago now. 17-9 it is. Bednar with it. They'll bring it up. Maroons trailing by that margin. 124. First quarter remaining. Butler to Mari. Stolen by Drake. By J.D. Drake. It is going to be batted around in forecourt with it. McCollum rejected, taken down briefly by Kiko, but put up by the Royals. 
Rebound, Sedlak. Man, that's action, isn't it? Everybody's on hyperspace right now. Four court, Ari Williams. Let's see if he gets one of those magic shots away. He misses that, but he's fouled. As he shot. Should be on the column. It's not in the action. Street, actually. Street, it is. Not in the act of shooting and bounding underneath the, the hoop, it will be. 17 9, the Royals Hunter with the lead. Hunter comes in, Ruff goes out. All right, Quan T squares number one out there. Sedlock got that to Ari. Ari wins. Can he find a spot? Not that far out. He'd have to have a cannon from there, but that's where he won the game just two nights ago. Ari Williams, dribble drive, dish it near side. Mile to Butler. Butler off the bench, has it tied up, gets it back. That's a double dribble. Butler was sensational against Centennial 24 hours ago. Not starting as quickly here tonight. 44 seconds. First half remaining. McCullum on the basketball. McCullum, top of the key, takes a wing popper. Yes, for McCullum. Kendall McCullum now has four. 19-9, Royals by 10. Blocking foul on Andrew Jones here as they try to get the ball inbound. Coach Stitter so upset on that last play because basically the ball was blocked. Chan was on the ball and he can't understand why it was a traveling call. Braden Royce will check back in, number 30 for Larkin. And you saw that the referee went over and explained that to Coach uh, Sitter here just a second ago. All right, inbound there to Bednar, battling Bednar to Sedlak. Eric had the game-winning shot against Centennial with Ari Williams still in backcourt, 25 second reign. Ari needs help. He'll go to Kiko, to Bednar, Tanner, Wig wagging with the dribble there. He'll stop and pop. Will Banner, we should say Bednar, and he misses that. And the It'll rebound was probably on Bednar, probably. And if you're a Maroon a fan, they're starting slow here. A lot of fouls there, as you mentioned, uh, Brandon, Kyle, and a slow start for the Maroons here. On the side, Sitter in, Butler out. Butler again. We talked with on post game here at High School Cube last night after a sensational game against the team from Vegas. Here we go, final shot time for the Maroons. Derek Streety, who we also spoke with last night. Streety with seven seconds. Streety now with four seconds. Streety, dish to the corner, he will. Here's the long shot, it's gonna be no good. Tapped out and that is it right there. One quarter of play, all oh, working Royals in that. They lead by 10, 19 to nine against the Elgin Maroons. And we'll have this, will we not? Dodge Dart is a proud sponsor of the Elgin Holiday Tournament. Lisa Dodge Dart for as low as $149 a month. We're going to take a short break and we'll bring it back right after this. We are back as it's 19-9, second quarter beginning right here. Marking up by 10. And there's going to be Sitter to Dunner as it rejected. Nice rejection that time. Royals defense very strong here, fellas, in the early going. Maroons will inbound Ari Williams. Williams on this night so far has just two points. Ari to Bednar, Bednar to Sedlak. Eric will spin it to Sitter near side, guarded by Quantis Hunter. Backward dribble by Ryan, now forward around the pick by Sedlak. Ryan will shoot it short, but a foul. Foul underneath against the Maroons. A lot of fouls, as you said, Brandon, a lot of fouls by the Maroons here. And that's on number 21 for the Maroons. Malik Dunner, that is. It's been a lot of fouls for both teams. Both teams only are, have no fouls to give until they are in the bonus. Yeah, well said. And with that, Dunner will sit for a while. It's your Maroon 5 would be Sitter and Kiko, Sedlock, Ari Williams, and Tanner Bednar. That would be your Maroon 5 for the Royals. They're out there with Hunter, Royce, Ruff, Streety, and Jones. Shot no. Rebound taken down by Sedlock. Sedlock will get the outlet to Tanner Bednar. 
Bednar will go to Ari Williams. Ari Williams will bring it across the timeline, motioning uh, with that left hand now, dribbling with the right. He's got a play in mind to Eric. Sedlak will spin around, bullet pass, Bednar. Bednar won't shoot from there. His pass is almost stolen. Bednar will shoot from there, though. It's short. Rebound taken down by McCullum. He's actually a fifth royal. McCullum is in there, not Jones. McCullum will go to Ruff, make it Quanti's Hunter shot. No, rebound taken down by McCullum. Up and no, but a foul. Great start by McCullum here, guys. McCullum is really having a great start so far. A lot of Royals starting out strong as the Elgin Maroons just can't match the pace. That foul is on Kiko Mari. 6.49, first half remaining. No score so far in the second quarter. Gonna the lead is 10. The Maroons. All right, McCullum has five. 20 to nine it is. This is going to be, that's uh, for the Maroons. They're gonna go deeper in that uh, bench, Kyle. And that would be Damian uh, Desmond Sanders. Check that number 22 there, young man. They don't always go to him right off the bat. Desmond yeah, Sanders. It's, yeah, it's unusual that he's even in the ball game. Sanders right there, Desmond Sanders. Harper had been seeing some action off the early bench for the Maroons in recent times. So Sanders wears number 22 out there. 20 to 9, Harry Williams. On the pick by Kiko. Will fall down right there. Let's see what we call. That's a little bit out of our line of sight. Good, good looking at it right there with our camera crew. Our multi-cameras take you inside this game or to the backside of the referee, our choice. And there it is right there. Inbounding right in front of us, Ari Williams. Is this Ari Williams' time here? Ari in the lane, Ari shovel shot, no. Battled for it and Sedlak puts it up and in. Eric Sedlak for two, he's got seven on the night. 2011, Streety, Derek Streety, the starting point guard early in the year, coming off the bench now. Streety will go to Royce, a long jumper. Rebound long, taken down by Mari. Kiko looks for help, the Sedlak to Ari. Hill, far side, this could be Ari Williams in the lane time. A shovel shot, yep, you saw it. Shake and bake, we used to say that one, guys. So Ari Williams now with four, 20 to 13. A four nothing run by the Maroons. McCullum having a great night, shot no draw foul. Very aggressive play for McCullum so far. McCullum looks like he's gonna attack the basket on every opportunity he gets. There's no doubt about it, McCullum has a jump shot, but he seems to find holes in this defense by Elgin and just attack the rim with ease. Kiko Mari with another foul. And uh, first toss is by McCullum. Is no good, staying at 20. Andrew Jones in, Royce out. And J.D. Drake will return at the next respite as well. He's probably gonna replace McCullum, it would look like, because McCullum's at the line. And Drake's waiting to go in. He's a recent addition. We didn't see him in a, our first game, uh, Kyle. J.D. is. This toss by McCullum is good. He will sit down for a brief moment. He's got six, J.D. in. Here we go, 21-13, 5.43, first half remaining. Ari Williams will inbound. Ari on the night so far has a couple of conventional twos for four points. Ari, bounce it, he does the sitter. Backcourt pressure, Sedlock to Ari. Ari picked up by Streety. Ari across that timeline. Williams, stop and pop from 18 feet away. Long, no good. Rebound taken down by Sitter. Sitter in the corner, gets it back to Sedlock. Eric, it goes now to Desmond. His shot will not go. Rebound battle for by Butler, who reverses it up and in. Isaiah nice Butler. Move. How'd you do that? That reverse up, was it? Yes, it was. 21-15. Revolution of the basketball. Spin move, Streety in the lane, shot, no rebound. Take it out by Desmond, outlet he will to Sedlak, to Ari. So number 22 off the bench, a bit of a spark here, Kyle. And Brandon, backward dish to Butler. Butler will throw it away almost, but Sitter gets it, guarded by Streety. Sitter doesn't shoot off and it might be here. Sitter will bounce it away and his last touch by whom? No one, he lost control of it. Turnover. I, I am kind of confused why Sanders is in as we get a replay here of the rebound from Butler in the Butler, up and under. Watch this reversal. Look at that revolution. Can you do that? That's, Can you go over I your head I just my back just watching it. Yes. It's kind of, it's a rough shot to do. Oh, even. it's impossible. Only falling on ice can do that. that. That's right. Here we go, 21-15, six point lead for the Royals and it's a shot. 
It's uh, not going to be good. But McCullum right back in there. Was out for about a half minute. It will be a foul against the Maroons. That's going to put them at one away from double bonus time. And there's four minutes and 37 seconds left in the half. So foul trouble coming at large for the Maroons. Gullum, a 6'1 junior. Good looking athlete. Really aggressive tonight, fellas. He's got seven points now. You see the house is pretty full here, isn't it, uh, Kyle and company? Yes, it is. A lot of celebrities here. The police chief is here along with his uh, contingent and as well as many other uh, fine uh, representatives of the Elgin Police Department here tonight. You're so good. You're the Herb Cupson of Elgin with that. He may get a special visit by the chief. 23-15. Did we do something wrong? Uh, uh, is, are me. you underage, young man? Here we go. <laughs> For the broadcast booth. 23-15. The steal there. Taken away by McCullum. Man, is he working. Missed the shot. Rebound. Battle for who's got it? No one. Everybody's touching it. What action that was there. Holy cow. Hunter went down. Nothing was called. There's Jeff Howard. And his son on the left right there. Jeff Howard we talked with on the post game on the Friday night game of this tournament. Ruffle inbound, and it is rough out there, you know, to McCullum. McCullum back across that timeline, set up shop again. His team's up by 8, 23-15. Championship game of the 30th annual Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. Dish it out to McCullum. Get some words from Coach Carter. Looks his way, guarded by Ari Williams. McCullum, angle right, goes with the pass out. Quantis Hunter for three. He's got five. He had 32 in the previous matchup of these two teams. Nice shot, well beyond the arc. 26-15. Bruins can't get close. They often come from behind, as you know. Most usually they come from behind if they win. They're only nine and six on the year. Butler trapped, looks for help. Pass it to Sedlak. Sedlak will say, I'll shoot. No good. Rebound tapped around. Taking about Andrew Jones, the 6'6 lad. Jones might go all the way and will. Jones shot, no. Rebound, Quanti stepped out, I think or a foul was called. Might have stepped out right there. You had a good look at it right there with that camera. And uh, Bednar tweaked his ankle there on that play. So Tanner, the 5'11 senior, will sit down. The re I, I cannot explain to you the reasoning for Desmond Sanders so early, but he has provided a little bit of a spark for this Maroon squad. He has indeed. No question about that. Sitter to Ari. Ari, it's Williams time here. Oh, look at that move. Missed a shot, but... You see his body's like jello. It can wiggle either way, can it? He slithered right on through there. He did indeed. The hips were going to the left, the hands were going to the right, and the basketball was going upward. The Maroons, compared to last night's game, haven't just have quite not got on track uh, for this first half here. Everything's just a little bit out of sync for them. Ari at the line, first one no good. I saw Coach Sitter up here earlier today, and you know, it's game after game after game. He looked like us a little fatigued. Except you, young man, you're young. You did two play-by-plays today, didn't you? Yes, I did. All right, here you go. This one good on this Saturday Thanksgiving good. tournament. Good to get that experience in there. That is great. Yeah, the Beacon Academy kids are blessed with the possibilities they have. 26-16 it is. McCullum, McCullum dish it backwards. They will. Long three is going to be good. Rough. That was by Ruff. Good call. Ruff for 11. He has now 29-16. It's all lurking in the Battle of Belgium here on a Saturday night on the east side of. Ari Williams answers that for a moment. That was really pretty. Williams now with eight. Ruff another three. Doesn't go. Rebound Sedlak. Sedlak looks to outlet. Will do so. He'll get it to Ari. Near side Ari across the timeline. Here comes Williams. Ari to Eric. Eric to Ari. Back to Ari Williams, one-on-one -on -one time with Quantis Hunter. Let's see what happens. Back, word three, rims it, yeah! Oh! Over the rim, under the rim, through the rim. 11 for Ari Williams, 29-21. Got the shooter's roll. He did. The shooter's bounce on that one. 29-21, McCullum, wing popper for him. He, no, he didn't get the shooter's roll that time. Set like the board. Lots of emotion in the old field house on this Saturday night for the championship game. Dribble drive, Ari. Dish and he will. Butler for a three. No. Rebound. Falling out of bounds. Taken there by Taylor Bolly. And double he's bonus time. Out. And he's going to get a shot. It's going to be double bonus time as Sanders with the foul. Here you go. Watch the replay here on that bounce. All right. Let's see this. Beautiful. That's great. Just the way we planned it. 
We appreciate the replays. Jeremy Hayes, Mario from uh, your Beacon Academy working together with a great cast here. Multi cameras we have for you, Count. And Beacon Academy under the fine instruction of our good friend Ben, ben Erickson. Erickson. Ben's uh, at home watching. He's babysitting tonight. As well he should. He deserves to be home once in a while. That's babysitting. right. That's right. Bali, first one. Good. One point. 30 21. That ends the mini run by the Maroons there. Nine point lead again for the Royals. They led by 10 at the quarter break. Second one by Taylor is good. 10 point advantage. There you have it. 31 21. Tanner Bednar back in there, so he's all right, Kyle. He returns. Bring it up. Ari Williams, one on one now with McCullum. This should be pretty here. 10 against 10. Ari Williams, land a three angle right. Yeah. Ari wow. Williams got 14. 31 24. You're never out of it when you've got Ari on your side, really. Cullum, long jumper. This is Ruff. No. Rebound taken out by Jones. No. Rebound by Ruff. Yes. Ruff put that in. 13 points for him. Quentin Ruff, 33-24. Butler in trouble. Slack. Ari says, give me the ball. Can't get it to him. Eric will dribble a little bit. Ari will come and get it right there. 115. First half remaining. Maroon trail by nine. 33-24, Ari Williams, ditch it back to Sedlock. Lane opens up, Eric, yeah, player no. control foul. Control foul. Wipe it away, no basket, a foul. Look at the crowd buzzing out there, huh? It's really been a hectic second quarter. It has. Lucky you're young, young man. 33-24, we're long past any concern. Nine point advantage. See how they play it. A minute remaining. Will they put the stall on here? Pass it around. Most likely not out on top. Andrew Jones, the 6'6 junior. Andrew had a great game last night after some subpar game for him. To Taylor, to McCullum. McCullum, far side to near side with the dribble. Head for the lane. Hippity hop to the hoop. Shot. No. Rebound battle for. Taken down by Williams. Here comes the Maroons. 35 seconds remain first half. All right, Williams picked up by McCullum again. Near side for court for Ari. See how he plays it. Ari, tricky dribble. Ari in the lane will draw a foul. Foul it is by Ari, who headed the hoop that time. This run by the Maroons isn't really a, a run by the Maroons. It's more of a run by Ari Williams. He's trying to carry his team back into this one. It has happened from time to time. Watch that replay as uh, Ari drove the lane and got a foul by McCollum on that. All right, Ari at the line's got 14 points on the night championship game of the 30th annual Elgin Holiday Tournament right here coming your way in High School Cube. 15 points for Ari. 33-25. Larkin is led all the way. Ryan Sitter in. Isaiah Butler out for the Maroons. 24.5 seconds remaining here. We're trying to broadcast just for you kids right there. Thanks for listening. Appreciate that. Here we go. In front of us got a great fandom. This one is Ari Williams again. He's got 16. 33, 26, 24.5 seconds. Now the Royals should hold for one with McCullum. They will. McCullum will go to Ruff. Ruff is disappearing in the crowd right there. See what happened. They uh, tried to block it out. Not, they already knocked it out of bounds. You see everyone standing right there, guys. That's the intensity of the it, crowd. It'll still remain the uh, Royals ball. All right, 13.7 seconds ring. Volley out. And Royce in for Darren Carter's troops. Inbounding right there. You saw Andrew Jones in four court. Ten seconds remain. Into the corner they go. Uh, basketball going right now to McCullum. McCullum will dish it back for Quantes. Hunter for three. No. Rebound Sedlak, and that'll do it right there. No foul is called in that last second shot. And that's your first half with the Larkin Royals on top, never having won this tournament before, leading the Elgin Maroons, the defending champion of this tourney, by a count of 33. 226. We'll be back to take a look at the stats. But right now, we're going to take this quick timeout right here on High School Q.
now as a 33-26 count is. Let's get a quick thought from you, young man. How, how do you assess that first half? I think that the first half was effective for both squads. The main cause, though, I think that Larkin really had success in the dribble drive as Quentin Ruff really took over, in my opinion, in the first and a little bit in the second. Ruff was driving to the hole, getting steals, and a little bit of everything. As Elgin had more of a Ari Williams show once again, as it seems to be that from night in and night out. Ari Williams having a fantastic game already. All right, well, well done. We appreciate you being aboard here. 33-26 it is here at the half. We're gonna take a quick time out, be back with second half action right here from the Elgin Holiday 38th Annual Holiday Basketball Tournament right after this. All right, we're back just like that. Our special halftime guest, Jeff Swoboda. You're a pretty good player in school, weren't you, at West Pond, huh? <laughs> you don't have video, do you? Like yeah, no, I wish we had wrong. some. He is your police chief here uh, for Elgin, and, and this is a great Elgin night, this matchup here, is it? It really is, and that's why I'm glad to be here. Elgin versus Larkin, a lot of people here from the city, and so nice cross-town rival, and uh, it's a great game so far. So uh, Elgin cutting it a little close. There's Larkin run away with a little bit early on, but uh, they're cutting it, they're going to make a game out of it, so I'm excited. As you know, they met back on December 12th and went to two overtimes, so anything can happen. That's right. I'm, I'm hoping for one of those games tonight. Ah, see that. We got nothing else planned, so we're hoping for a great game that goes on and on because I don't want to end. This is a great night for us. And Elgin. don't forget, they'll have a rematch on February 1. You always enjoy that on highschoolcube.com, so yeah. that'll be fun. Hey, we appreciate you being here. You are such a, a visible and viable police chief. Young you are, you're in the community, and it's, uh, you do a great job in the city of Belgium. I appreciate that. I'm having a, having a lot of fun. The city's a great city, and uh, the uh, community's so active, so it's great to be the police chief Belgium right. and having a blast. And this is a wonderful crowd here, isn't it? It is. It's a great crowd. A lot of people from the community. It's great. And you see all these uh, both sides for Elgin yeah. and Larkin, the, uh, the student body out there uh, supporting their team. So it's a great night for Elgin. This is the biggest house at the field house in your tenure as police chief. I can safely say that. There you go. All right. It's good all to right. Know. Jeff Sobota. Thanks for dropping by. Hey, we appreciate thanks, that. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being at High School Cube. We'll take a quick time out back with the second half right after this.
We are talking it over with the Allen Twins. First of all, Marcus Allen. Marcus, Malcolm right there. We'll talk with you in just a moment. Great viewership you've had back in Las Vegas. you got a great fandom back there, young man. Yes, sir. Um, everyone at Centennial High School is watching. I know a lot of my friends are watching, so I just want to shout out Las Vegas for that one. Yeah, it's great. We appreciate you coming all the way to Illinois. You lost a couple of times here, young man. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get better, and we're just going to work harder when we get back. It's a little chip on our shoulder when we get back to league play. We're going to play teams like Bishop Gorman. Sure. Desert Oasis. We're going to try to go back in. Mark is talking to us. Malcolm, in just a minute. You have already committed to Stanford. Is that right? Um, we actually signed to Stanford. Both uh, of you guys have both? Yeah, it's all done. You guys, are, you guys are the most effortless leapers I've ever seen. It's like you just float. Thank you, thank you. And although tonight, as we talk on the Saturday night in the third place game, you had some flush trouble tonight, didn't you? you, you that, that. Yeah. You were I mean, jamming them on Friday, but on Saturday, that, that you know, the rim was hurting you. It was kind of legs, man. I've been playing all game, but yeah. You know, I have to get back, get rested up, really bad. Four games in four days is a lot. Oh, yeah. Have you enjoyed your trip to Elgin, Illinois? I enjoyed it a lot. I get to saw a lot of snow, which I don't see much in Vegas. I get to snowball fights, went to Wrigley Field. So it, was, so it was a great experience for me wow. and my team. Congratulations. Thanks for coming out. Good luck to you. You'll stay in touch with them, won't you? Yes, sir. Thank All you. All right. Hand that headset to Malcolm. We'll coot you out here real quick. Malcolm, just lean in here a little bit. Malcolm, uh, you've already committed as well. That's great for Stanford. Yes, sir. How do you see your role in college? Um, I mean, it all depends. I mean, of course I want to get there and um, get minutes, but you know what? I can come off the bench. I can do whatever I want for my team. I mean, as long as I help them win games, that's all. Sure. Malcolm, of course, what was your most favorite thing about Elgin? Uh, snowball fights, hanging out with my teammates. I had a great time here. I really, I really, I want to come back, actually. All right, say hello to everybody in Vegas for you. I mean, hi, Vegas. All right, hi, Vegas. All right, thanks, Malcolm. We appreciate that. The Allen Twins. Yes, sir. Thanks for dropping by. Good luck to you the rest of the season. Absolutely, thank you. It's our special interview with the Allen Twins. is our thanks to Jeff Simona, police chief. Also, we had the Allen twins uh, coming our way. So we, we had all kinds of good interviews here. We're right on, not me on camera again. I just saw we, we had fun with Jeff Simona. Everybody identify yourself. You are? Brandy Giese. You uh, are? I'm Kyle Ball. Nice to see everybody. And who are here. you? I don't know now, but we're having a great time tonight. <laughs> Bringing everybody out in the uh, community of Elgin, that's exciting, and we're ready for second half right now, fellas. So let's go back to work. And, and this is a great thing for the community, regardless of whatever happens, final score. Always a great thing when these two schools can come together, especially bringing out a lot of the seniors in the community. Glad to see them out here right now. All right, sounds good, guys. Here we go. So long, fellas. Take care. All right, sit back, and relax. Take it away, Jeff. Gollum will get it to rough, rough out on top. Royals lead by seven, 33 26. Andrew Jones out there. State starting five uh, for the Maroon, for the Royals anyway, and the Maroons as we look. Rolling in the bounds almost Jones. Gets it back to Quantis Hunter, guarded by Tanner Bednar. Quantis will lob it to Royce. He's guarded by Blake Denner. Royce shot, no rebound, battling Bednar. Allen to Ari Williams. Ari Williams will bring it up on the far side. He said Ari Temu almost did the splits there. Didn't travel though. Ari Williams. Back it goes now. Dunner, Malika Runner in the lane. No rebound, rough. Quinton will bring it up. Almost looks like you back in your disco days. Exactly. And it's Quantese Hunter for two. Hunter has seven points on the night. Nine point lead for Larkin. Ari Williams 
Goes far side to Malik. Malik lob it now to center. Ryan center in the corner. Ari Williams land up. Three. No. Rebound. Sedlock. Eric back up. No. Tapped out. Taken down by Ruff. Market starting quick here again. They're up by nine. They have the pumpkin. Ruff will think about a shot. Doesn't do it to Quantis. Quantis can shoot from there if he wants. Quantis. Ruff land up. Three. Rims it. No. Board work. Sedlock. Allen Ari. Williams brings it up to your side. Ari Williams, we hear a whistle. Probably a latch shot foul by Ruff. 35-26, Larkin quick again, guys. Looks like uh, Larkin came out ready to play once again out of the half, looking strong. The Maroons, of course, the last, the last couple of games have been tough going down the wire. There may not be too much left in the tank, but if they're gonna get going, Air Ari has gotta get going here. Yeah, Air Ari, there we go. 35-26 it is. Air Ari at Williams has it now. Ari, see if he can get a little space and pop one there. He can't do it. Into the corner it goes. To Bendar. Bendar won't shoot here, we don't believe. He'll spin it back to Ari Williams. Good defense here by Larkin. Ari Williams, wing popper, back away. Jay, yeah. That's Ari. Give him a step. He can do a little bit right there. So Ari Williams with that. He now has 18. 35 28. Leading in. McCullough. McCullough. No. He's been the man for the Royals tonight, hasn't he? McCullough with eight. Him along with Ruff. And he'll go to the line. A shooting foul. Seven point advantage for the Royals. Said like second foul. Uh, all right. Big Eric. There we see the free throws here by Kendall McCullough. 6 1 junior. This one is good. He's got nine. Eight point advantage for Larkin. There's a good look at the lad. He has played very, very well for the Royals. As the Royals have gotten much better as the season has progressed, Kyle. Brandon, you know that. This one good, 10 points. Royals are 13 and two on the campaign. The Maroons are nine and six. At one point, they were under 500 at five and six to St. Charles East. Ari will be fouled. Just back on December 21, that was. So eight days ago, the Maroons were under 500, Kyle. Eight days later, basically, they are in their own tournament championship game. And the rest is uh, going to be in their hands. as they, If they play like they did last night down the stretch as a team, they haven't got entangled tonight. But I'll tell you what, it could go a lot better than just the Ari Williams show. But we know Elk Larkin is going to be an excellent team. They're getting stronger and stronger. So it's going to take a while. The chemistry just isn't quite all the, all the same there after losing four seniors off this maroon team last year. Second toss by Ari is no good rebound. Andrew Jones outlet to McCullum. McCullum will bring it up quickly. Spins it back down to Ruff. Ruff to Jones. Jones in the lane. Andrew dish it to Royce. Royce back to the basket. Out on top it goes to Ruff. Ruff fakes left, goes right. Spins it back now to Quantis Hunter. Quantis Van be a land of three man here. Doesn't do it. To McCullum. McCullum got it by Ari Williams. 520 remain third quarter. Royals by eight. Far side McCullum. Now it goes rough. Land to three. Angle left. Short. Rebound taken down by Ari. He's had some boards tonight. Ari will bring it up. Let's see if this is a quick shot. Williams will spend to the lane. Here's one no good, but he's fouled. Williams will go to the free throw line. Williams really looking to attack the basket here against this Larkin squad. Larkin looks to be breaking down a little bit their defense. They might have to pick that up if they want to retain this lead. You know, guys, we had an interview with the Allen Twins that was played at halftime, and they, uh, Marcus confessed that they got a little fatigued game after game after game. The legs were a little heavy tonight. So that could be with all the players out there as well. And, and mentioning that, uh, well, we got a quick break in talking with Coach Todd Allen. But both of them are sons of doctors, uh, and they have a real tough regimen. They're up at 4, 4.30 every morning. They have their own trainer. They go through workouts, go to practice. Then they have a, a, a great member basket machine, those three or 400 shots, go to school, do their homework, go to practice, shoot again, go home, do homework, and they're back at the gym with one of the automatic uh, basket uh, gunners shooting baskets again. Wow. White every day. Regiment there. 37 31. Ari made a boat during the tail of the out. Royce. Yes. And he's foul. He's going to go to the line trying to make the old fashioned three. Did you also happen to hear about their grade point average? They're both at 4.6 or above. Wow. 
Yep. Guys, guys are students. Yep. Guys are making me feel bad now. Yeah, you were at what 4.4, right? I didn't know it had to be a positive number. <laughs> Braden Royce at the line. 39-31. Try to stretch the lead for the Royals back up to nine. This one is good. And good play tonight for these Lurkin Royals. Even Ari Williams looks a little exhausted tonight. I think four days and four nights. <coughs> Certainly you know that young Mr. TC after two games, two play by play games today, you have to realize how much voice you use in that, those venues. Throw it away. And it's going to be brought up here by Luck in 40 31. Here we have it. McCullum. Crowd a little hush right now, aren't they? Watching the action. Derek Streety back in there for the Royals. He'll take a wing popper from 17. It's short rebound. Taken out by Isaiah Butler. Butler back in now. Ari Williams. Williams, three point time now. Partially blocked by Quantes Hunter. Hunter starts the fast break and loses it. Hunter was open. He blocked it. Ran up, had the pass, went through the fingertips. He really had an opportunity there to get easy points for the Larkin squad, but went right through his hands. I mean, that's just a Butterfinger moment. R.E. Williams, Sedlak. Bruins trail by nine, 40-31. They are the defending champions of this holiday tournament. To Sedlak. Eric looks for help. Sitter, Sitter to Ari. Ari might get a shot right here. Landing a tall one, short. Rebound, no. Taken down by Malik Dunner, up and in. Malik for two, his first two of the night. Going to be a timeout right there, 40-33. Is a seven-point advantage for the Royals. We've got 350 remaining here in the third quarter. Let's take this timeout right here on High School Cube. Seven-point lead for Larkin. There's a foul. No travel. Something happened there. Look at that. The Maroons are going to have to pound this ball inside. Ari is tired. He's got nothing left on his legs. Watch all the shots are just hit the front of the rim. Usually that's an indication that you got your legs are getting tired because you're just not getting the same jump on it, and your arms are getting tired when that ball is going short every time. They need to pound the ball in the paint, try to get some fouls here on the Royals. Even though we're not a great uh, foul shooting team, you take those points when you got no time running on the clock. JD back in there for the Royals. Seven point lead it is. It is inbound to Butler. Butler can be fresh, has played all that much till recent times to Ari Williams. Ari in the lane. He'll be fouled. He will be fouled. And just like last day, they talked about a team effort. Really not a team effort tonight. They're going strictly with Ari. So what a difference between night and day. Yeah, Butler was very exceptional last night, and so was Sedlak, scoring-wise, as you mentioned. So here we go. Williams at the line. Ari on the line has 21 points with tired legs, and this one is good. 22, 40, 34. He shoots into a sea of royal blue there with the student section standing as one at those bleachers right there. That's Ari. This second toss is a good, not good. Rebound, Battleford taken down by Ruff, and he'll bring it up. Ruff in four court, six point Larkin lead. They led by seven at the half break. Quantis to Streety. Derek Streety will take the long shot. It's going to be short. Rebound, tapped by Butler, but taken by Ruff. 
to Andrew Jones. Tapped by J.D. No. Rebound finally. Harry Williams. Harry will be fouled. Great battle right there. Now they, uh, you know, settle right down. Good sportsmanship. Great physical contact out there, no doubt about it. Whistle that foul on J.D. And it is going to be now 248. Third quarter remaining. Team foul number five, that was, on the Royals. Up to Ari Williams. See how Ari handles this. Ari in the lane. Ari gets you through the lane. And it's going to be a foul. That's it. Drive that ball in tight. Get those fouls. But you need that extra time. Relax. These guys are tired. Run some time off that clock. Not take the time off the clock, but at least take this time. Get those fouls. Get relaxed. And try to get into the bonus. I almost napped during your long lecture there. I was so relaxed after that. Malik. That time you too proud for that time. <laughs> That's right. You're still with us, aren't you, Brandon? Yes, I am. Here we go. Malik Detter misses the first. Malik, a uh, good looking sophomore. He'll try again here for Dunner. This one is no good. Rebound battle for Ari Williams scrapping for him. We got a foul on somebody. Who's the foul on? Looks like it's going to be on. On Ari, I guess. The way the Larkin fandom's reacting, or it goes out of bounds at least. Yeah, there is a foul. Oh, no, Ari. His first. No factor there. Team foul number three that will be. Here they come, Streety. The offense is slowed down for both squads. Here's Streety. Leaner it is for Derek. It's up and in. Streety for two. That's his first two points. A lot of options for the Royals in this 13-2 team they have. All right, Williams. Guarded by Quantis Hunter. Backward dish to Sedlock. Eric trying to get in the offense a little bit. Spins around, spins around, needs help. He'll throw it away. Stolen it is there by Ruff. The forecourt, Ruff in the lane. Ruff all the way. Ruff, banker, no. Rebound, Ari Williams. Ari to Ryan Sitter. Can he track it down? He can't. Pass break gets away. Still 42-34. Larkin, 159, third quarter remaining. A lot of action, not much scoring for the Maroons here, fellas. That was just not a very good angle by Sitter there to the ball. Far side, Streety picked up defensively by Tanner Bednar. Streety in the corner, on the wing, down deep. Jones is open, he might have pushed a foul on somebody. Either a hold on Sedlak or a push off by Jones. Could be a hold on Sedlak. It is, good call. There's a replay coming in on that place. Yep, oh, bad angle. Oh, he didn't get the ball, but did get our cameraman. Long jumper, Quantis Hunter, no. Rebound long, who's got it? Jones out of bounds, I guess last touch by Aaron. Royals basketball. JD will inbound. Lots of physical play under close quarters, if I can say that tonight. Very compact gymnasium with a nice house. Streety with 135, third quarter remaining. Royals with a lead of eight points in the basketball. Streety one on one with Bednar. Spins around, fall away. Jay will be no good. Rebound taken down by the Royals. They miss a shot. Sedlock had it. There's a foul. J.D. missed one down low there. And then the foul took place on the following action. It's going to be Sedlak, and that's going to put them into the one-on-one -on -one situation. Sedlak's going to the line for Elgin. Eric on the night, uh, Kyle, has uh, seven. And here again, an opportunity for the Maroons to get back in this ball game, having the fouls and their advantage and stepping to that line and taking advantage of those free throws. As you can see there, Coach Larkin. Coach, Coach Carter, Carter. Yeah, we'll talk with him uh, after the game if all things go well. He shouted out a great Larkin uh, player he was. And Brandon, a question about it. Eric, uh, shot is good. Sedlock has eight. He's only, there's only been three points outside of Ari Williams scored by the Maroons in this quarter, 42-35. Outside of air, Ari. Sedlock, next fast uh, shot, we should say, for uh, critical. Yeah, indeed they were at nine. He's got 42, 36. That big, those free throws. Streety, guarded by Eric. Now picked up by Kiko Mari. Shot, no. Rebound taken down by no one. They battle for it. McCullum, uh, what happened there? We hear a whistle. A uh, whistle it is. What are they Time Timeout by Coach Carter before the bullet pass. That would have been a two-pointer probably for Quantis Hunter. So the Royals timeout. 
We'll keep it right here, let you guys analyze a little bit. 42-36 it is. Maroons lead trailer by that, we should say. I feel like that the Maroons need to work the ball around a little bit more here instead of their one-man show here. Ari Williams looks like he's running out of gas very quickly. It's the third quarter. You're going to need him for the fourth. Why don't yeah. you work the ball around a little bit more, share the time. Maybe you don't score as much this quarter, but then you'll have him strong in the final quarter when you need him most. Absolutely. Man, you may want to set him down here for the last minute, give him a little extra, give him a little blow, as they say. But they still need to pound that ball on the pavement and take advantage because Larkin is also tired, and now you can be susceptible to those getting those uh, fouls. But who knows? What do we know? That's why we're up here. It's hard on a player to only have one break in the game, and that's going to be halftime, where you only get a couple of minutes in the locker room to get yelled at by your coach. So <laughs> it's kind of hard for a player to only have one total break in a whole game. Or encouraged by your coach at halftime. You never know. Here we go. Royals with the basketball. That's Derek Streety out on top. Streety between the circles. Got it by Sedlock. Dish it here side. Ruff, Ruff will get closer. Ruff in the lane. Ruff, Dish it far side. Quad tees Hunter. Hunter from a too far under. We'll get to Streety. Land of three for Derek. Yeah! Streety for three. He's got five. Nine point lead it is for the Royals. Under a minute, third quarter. There's a steal. Taken back by the Maroons. They might have been fouled. Coach Carter takes a jacket halfway off, didn't like that call, as a foul was whistled there on the Royals. It is out of our line of sight, but we have replay, or we have our other cameras, because it's getting pretty hectic down there, with the fandom right here at the field house. Looks like Tanner Bednar will go to the line. This game is getting really heated. Even if it's not as close as you think, it's the intensity level is what's gonna be the most important factor. Bednar, no. Rebound, Balfour. Put up by Mari, no. Rebound again, rejected by Quantes Hunter. Tanner Bednar has it. Here we hear a whistle. What do we got? Timeout, Elgin. Another timeout. Timeout, Elgin. There again, uh, looked like he was getting that ball passed in for a basket. And this time, Ryan, uh, Coach Sitter calls the, uh, the timeout. Just 32.4 seconds remaining in this quarter, so we'll keep it right here. We'll remind you, of course, uh, Kyle, you had something for it. Well, I was just going to ask uh, young Darren, how do you like this experience of being at South Elgin High School and being a part of this, this program? Oh, this is the greatest experience of my lifetime. This is what I want to do when I grow up. So if I could ask for anything more, there isn't. This is the greatest experience possible for me in this situation. This is why I came to South Elgin, and this is what I love to do. What grade are you in right now? I'm a sophomore in high school. Sophomore? All right, excellent. And you got a great teacher, Ben's a... Uh, Lifelong friend of Jeff and I, so you got a great teacher there, great experience. Back to the other Jeff for an exciting action here, Jeff. Ari Williams to Tanner Bednar, Kiko Mari. Mari can shoot, goes to the lane, it's open up. Mari for two. Kiko, his first two points on the night. 45-38, just staying close enough for the Miracle on Maroon Drive finish for Maroon fans. Royals fans enjoying the game to this moment. Down to 15 seconds in the third quarter. 45-38, Streety backwards and forwards with a dribble. Under 10 now, it's seven seconds. Counting it down, you can hear the crowd. Five, we're down to three. Jumper by Streety is good. Good roll, and that's it right there. Streety dominating the late third quarter at the end of three stanzas. It's the Larkin Royals, 47. The Elgin Maroons, 38. We're gonna take this time out on high school shoe. Back like that, ready for the fourth quarter. You guys are ready, aren't you? Yes, we are. Take our positions. Batting down the hatchet mall. It's fourth quarter, Elgin against Larkin. Holiday basketball tournament. Never happened before. Could never happen again at the holiday tournament time here for the championship game. 
Runes are the defending champion. Larkin's trying to win for the first time ever. 121st meeting of the two schools. Working around. Sedlock with it out on top. Eric to Ari. Ari may be a bit fatigued on this fourth game in four days. Ari Williams. Can he push it up there? He'll throw it to a teammate to center. Back to Sedlock. Now to Bednar. Bednar with it. And he'll take a shot. Bednar, no tap, no rebound. Andrew Jones. Jones, outlet to Streety. Here comes Derek. A three-on-one breakaway to Ruff. He's fouled from behind by Ryan Sitter. Two shots. Another nice. tough miss by uh, Tanner Bednar. He, he just quite, uh, you know, just a number of different shots has had a problem the last couple of nights just getting that to roll in. He was lectured by his mom in the hallway before the game shot. Remember Michael Jordan. That's what you basically told us earlier. But battling Bednar at 5'11". Gets a lot of boards for an undersized wingman at the high school level. Shot not good by Ruff. He's a little scrapper for the Algin Maroon squad. Oh, he is. He's a great team player. He's that throwback, that, that hard-nosed lad who goes out there, just does it with what he has. He positions himself well. Struggled with a shot, but gets some points. But that's not really the key component for him. Ruff's second shot is good. He's got 14. It's 48-38. Ari Williams will inbound. Ari to center, and Ari will bring it up. A long comeback for Ari here on this one. We'll find out what will happen. The Maroons trailed by 10 in the first time they met at half. It was only one, not three quarters. There's going to be a shot down low by Sedlock. No. Battle for by Malik. No. Rebound taken down by the Royals. They'll bring it up. The Streety. A wonderfully balanced team out of these Larkin Royals of the 12-13 campaign and they're 13 and 2 on the year. Quantis to Jones. Andrew pushed around, nothing called. Back to Quantis. Quantis can hit a three if he wants to. There's the attempt right there. No. Rebound. Who's got it? And there was a bunch battle that's going to be called on the Maroons. Let me have a send lap. That really is a huddle there on the rebounding spot, isn't it? And you can just look at the, uh, the expressions and the body language on the Maroons that they are just whooped. At two, it's like they were battling for the final seat on the CTA there when they were grouped around trying to get the basketball. Inbounding to Streety. Streety sets up shop. He can be patient now. 6.35 remain. Royals up by 10. Bender on him. Forward and backward. There's a determined look of Tanner Bender. And when we got timeout, Darren Carter. Timeout, Coach Carter, with an unhappy look on his face. We'll look, keep it right here. Tell me what you guys saw there. I see a lot of good and a lot of bad coming from both sides. I don't like exactly what Larkin's doing right now. They're playing a little cat and mouse game, and it's not going to work out in the end. But Elgin just looks dead tired. I mean, there's not much you can do about that after having four games. But the thing is, this is the last game for a little bit for the Elgin Maroons. you got to put everything you have into it. Everything you've got is going into this game. You're down 10, you gotta fight back. Ari Williams, probably one of the most clutch players I've seen throughout this tournament. You've gotta let him do work, but he also needs a lot of help from the bench. Well exactly said. right, well put. Yeah, we can't embellish on that, nicely done. We'll just get ready for more action on the court. 626 remain. They always have a lot of fight, the Maroons do. There's no doubt that Ari Williams likes probably a bit fatigued on this night and everyone is everybody's been out here for all the games there's some replays there look at that battle in there there's battling Bednar and here we go Royals will inbound in four court near side and they get it in to Andrew Jones Streeny's in there along with Quantis Hunter Ruff Royce spin move by Royce offhand shot no who's got the rebound out of bounds the Royals will bring it up we have a great look at the rebounding spots here for this side of the court. It really is not much area. Bednar out and Butler in. This is for offense here. They might go offense defense for a while, guys. Try once again. What do we got? And in once again will be McCullum for Ruff. McCullum comes back in with 10 points. Ruff sits down with 14. See, that's the thing that Larkin has that Elgin does not, the depth in their bench. That is true. Well said. Ari Williams. Brings it up. Might be quick shot time for Ari if he can do it. Double team there. Williams, forward and backward. Williams on that right side into the lane. He goes, shovel shot, no good. 
Rebound tapped out to McCullum. Here he comes fresh off the bench. McCullum coast to coast. No, but he's fouled. No question, that's why the Larkin team, uh, your number one seed basically in this tournament, placed the top bracket with Centralia, uh, the Sentinel squad, we should say, from uh, Vegas. But they do have good depth and a lot of variety, a lot of offensive looks. It seems like the Larkin squad can bring anyone off the bench at any time and expect the same amount of play as the guy they had in before. That's no. something that is a just something you need to have if you're going to want to succeed in a, such a deep tournament like this. Got 11 points, now McCullum does. How you doing, Florida Gator fan right in front of us here. Is a good look at Kendall. His second toss is no good. Rebound, who's got it? Ari Williams. Oh, they got at least a half dozen boards here on this night. Team down by 11. This might be insurmountable even for the Miracle of Maroon Drive man. They throw it away. 5.44 remain. Clock beginning to tick, guys, as far as the miracle on this night. It well, might, it's a no-lose situation. You got an Elgin team's gonna win the championship. That's right. Royal fans here, Maroon fans here. Elgin against Larkin. Police Chief Jeff Sabota here on this night. All the town out for it. Everybody right here at the Fieldhouse, 38th Annual Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. Enjoy it on High School Cube if you're not here, or if you are, McCullum. Fireside to Rump. Ruff, dribble drive lane, opens up, Ruff with the offhand, up and in. Two points, Twin Ruff, he's got 16. He sat down for about a minute, came back in. 51-38, Larkin. These two teams will meet again February 1 here at the Fieldhouse. Ari Williams in the lane, shot no. He'll go to the line for two. There's nothing left in those legs, even trying to get up there, even though he's getting uh, hacked and blocked and everything else. Just nothing left in the tank. And we're not far behind him here in the booth. <laughs> I might add in that right, young man. It's been a long day here in the booth. 5.09 remain. Here we go, Ari Williams. First toss is good. Even on a fatigue night, he's got 23. Ari went over the 1,000 point mark for his maroon career. Of course, Sean Harrington now on the Big Ten Network, a color commentator, all time leading scorer for the Maroons. Graduated in class of 1999 to Sean Flake, Illinois, four years, and a coach until his time now on the Big Ten Network. Streety, a jumper from the top of the key, air ball, goes out of bounds. Ari says, I'll save it. Shot the pass break, Ari, hit the hop. Ari at four court, Ari Williams. Can he get a shot away? Backward to Sedlock from three. Sedlock, yes! There it is! That might just be what they needed right there to spark him. 51-43, it's about Ari time. Sedlock, who won the game last night with the three-pointer, or two-pointer, we should say, and a rough, rough the streety. 434 remain to McCullough, to Hunter, to Rough. Great tandem right there. Down deep, they try to work, bring it back out, Streety. They can take some time off. They will open it up here, and then the shot, not good, tip, not good. Rebound battle for Ari the board. Ari Williams, ditch it up here to Malik, down deep it is to center, who's gonna be fouled. That looked actually really clean from up here. I don't know, it, they called a foul on it. Do we have a replay? Ryan Center will go to the line. See what Center can do at the line, Ryan. Coach's son, young junior is. Algin, after that, three from the big man, Eric Sedlak, seems to have a little more life than we thought left in them, huh? Indeed, Coach Carter concerned there on the sidelines, center another one. The rest of the team needs to contribute here down the stretch. Butler back in there, Isaiah Butler for the Maroon shot, no good, rebound Andrew Jones. A nice night tonight, Jones is treating. Important stop here if you're a Maroon fan. Important offensive possession if you're a Royals fan. Lead by seven, four minutes remain. Streety out on top, cut it by Butler to Rump. Knocked away, stolen by Isaiah Butler. Butler might go all the way. Butler in four court, knocked away. Butler gets it back, tracks it down. Butler will dish it back to Sedlock, to Ari Williams. Ari Williams, 347 remain. Williams, dish it back down to Sitter. Sitter in the lane, bullet pass down deep. Gunner lost it. You've got to handle that one. Out of bounds, it goes off Malik. He Royals was bring it up. That was. I think the biggest man on the court right now has to be Butler. Probably the freshest player on the court. For the Maroons, you're correct with that. Streety, 
Out of town. Streety in the lane. Foul from behind. In the bonus. Foul Set by Butler. Into the line. 51-44 if you join this late. Again, holiday tournament, 38th annual rant right here. High School Cube, thanks for being aboard. We've got the multi-cameras, three-man booth. We're just like, gosh, a network here on this night, aren't we? There's a good look at Streety. Streety, the starting point guard early in the year. Injured, Groin kept him out for a couple of games. Now he comes off the bench. Streety now has eight. Eight-point lead it is for the Royals. 3.29 remain. Second toss by Derrick is good. He's got nine, almost rolled out, rolled in instead. 9.33s for Ari or thereabouts. Williams brings it up, he's triple teamed at times. He'll bounce it to Sedlock. Eric will look to see if he can shoot somewhere. To Butler, Butler way out. Butler in the lane, Butler, dribble drive, shot, no, tip, no. Tip by Malik, no. Rebound Jones. He's not getting those close ones in. And the Royals, Take it back the other way, and a long three, no. Rebound, Ari Williams. Ari Williams, Ooh. Sedlock, Sedlock, yes. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. For 14. The beautiful Nola pass from Ari Williams. Wow. 53-46, seven-point lead. Streety, out of town. 2.48 remain. He's got quads, he's Hunter on his left. He'll go into the lane, it opens up, shot, no. Player control foul, turnover by Larkin. This is the moment, if it happens, for another miracle on Maroon Drive. There's Look at that last, that last play by the Maroons. Oh, what a pass. That was good. That was good. Here we go. Royce out for Larkin. This is the time for Larkin. This is what they need right here, right now. It's time for the miracle on Maroon Drive to step up if they want to win this game. Small team here, guys, for the Maroon, uh, for the Royals, which is a rough McCollum. Andrew Jones, the only big guy, and Streety would be out there. They would have basically four guards and four shooters, Andrew Jones, rebounder. Looks like Sedlak's the only big guy in the court for the Maroons, but Sedlak is not necessarily a big guy. He can shoot. I like it. This ball, too, what we saw down there, a violation by Larkin. A little blocking foul there on McCollum. Larkin, foul, Ari Williams to the line. And we've just had a foul out. Derek Streety just fouled out, guys. Streety fouls out. They called out on Streety, eh? With 2.34 remaining, he fouls out. The way I see that, because we have, Coach Carter has a moment here to decide who replaces him when you foul out like that. Royce back in, Streety out, with a foul out time at 2.34 remaining. He had nine points, Kyle. And there's not a player on either team that wants to foul out at any point in an Elks Arc game. They want to be on the floor oh, yeah. when that buzzer goes off. 23 points for Ari Williams, he's at the line. Ari Williams sides it and going to shoot again. He hits it. He is going to start to shoot. Maybe something caught his eye in the Larkin student section standing up front of him there. Here's a replay. There it is right there. Ooh, I don't quite see what it was there. Ari Williams, another toss. Good. 25 points for Ari Williams. 53-48. Here comes the Royal. Cross that timeline. They're bringing it with McCullum now. He's got fresh legs after him, down for a while. McCollum now will work it out and take the time off the clock here, guys. It will be for them to open it up. Rough to McCollum. McCollum from near to far to Quantis Hunter. Same thing. Great dribbling routine they have. Although Sweeney fouled out, they have three guards and two big men now as Voice and Jones are up front. To Ruff. Ruff will bring it to the wing, bring it back out. Two minutes. Two minutes remain in the contest. Royals by five. The Maroons need to foul. And a timeout for Coach Carter. I don't and like the cat and mouse game. I don't like it at all. We'll do the same. 156 remain. Royals by five. We're right back after this from High School Q. Winners, in case we work uh, a couple of time out, we're here. 
We are right back just like that. Great uh, day it was here. This game 32 of a 32 game tournament. Congratulations to Dundee crowd. They were in fifth place, but they finished sixth. They lost the fifth place game to Glenbar North. But a good showing by those guys just up the way, 63-51. And Batavia, yes, Batavia, a 10-point win over the team from Las Vegas, Nevada, and those Allen twins for third place. Kind of a shocker. It was. Batavia, a night to remember for Bulldog fans over here. You watch that replay on High School Cube, whatever you see fitting all the highlights as well. Here we go. Five-point lead. Royals the basketball, 150 remain. They've got the dribbling guards out there. Quantis Hunter, guarded by Bednar. Hunter, bounces it to Royce. Royce thought about a shot for a moment or faked like he did. Back onto the three guards. It is going to be Quantis. Quantis to McCullough, to Ruff. 135 remain. Ruff dances around, backwards and forward. 90 seconds remain, double team, they want to foul right there. Malik Hunter finally does. 127 remain, the Royals to the line. Great ball handling ability by Darren Carter's troops here. This game's getting really tight, but it's gonna come down to free throw shooting, guys. And double bonus situation, one of two. I think if Larkin goes one of two each time, they'll win it. Rob has 16 points on this night. Only three here in the second half. I believe that's five on. Who, who's the follow Because that's a time that we I think it was on Dunner. Well, Malik Dunner. Dunner was going to be five. Yeah, right. oh, he's that's still in there. Up the so. All right, here we go. Still the one and one time on this one. There's a big one right here. First one is good. He's got 17. Royals are 13 and two on the season. The Maroons are nine and six. Six point advantage for Larkin. Second toss by Quinton Ruff. Takes his time, bends the knee, sides it, and now shoots it. This one is good. Adds key stuff down the stretch. Seven point advantage, it is. Maroons trail by that. They'll bring it up Ari Williams, detained on his way up. He'll look for help. He'll bounce it to Sedlock. They get it into forecourt. Four court it is to Sedlock, and now we see Ari Williams with it. Ari Williams, top of the key. Ari Williams, out on top. Ari dancing around, can't get free. Ari needs help, needs to get it to Butler. Can he do it? He'll bounce it instead to a teammate. Ari Williams to Sedlock. Sedlock down to Butler. Butler in the lane, shot, no good. Rebound, Royce, actually held ball. They battle for it right there. That was a tussle, Butler and Royce. Possession, Larkin. All right, Larkin it is, 57.1 seconds remaining. Everyone standing, your best view is right where you're watching. Here's our replay right there. Here it comes, that's gonna be Butler down the lane eventually here. These guys are moving faster than I remembered. Here we go back to live action. Actually, back to live action it is. And Ruff has it under a minute, just 49 seconds. They're gonna have to foul right here, right now. Or have to hold ball it. Either way, it's a foul. Looks like Gunner the foul. Now they actually called Ari Williams on it. He probably had a hell ball situation. All right, 46.1 seconds remaining. Ruff, who made two in a row a moment ago, will go to the line. I think one of two, even even one of two, will probably seal the deal for the Larkin Royals here. Not just not enough time on the clock. All right, he's going to see what he can do here. Actually, made two two last time. So here we go on this one. He makes this one. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You win close, tough games with wonderful free throwing, as you guys know. 19 points, eight point advantage for the Royals. Only 46.1 seconds remaining. Larkin approaching history. They have never, never won this tournament. The Maroons are the defending champion. So the torch will be passed on this night if it continues this way. From Elgin to Elgin, if you will. But from Elgin to Larkin, three shot, no rebound battle for Quantis Hunter has it. Hunter's bringing it up. It's getting close now. A nine point lead with 34 seconds remaining. There must have been a foul right there. Ari Williams. Williams. Foul by Ari. We've got a good vantage point up here, but everybody is standing. At least on this side, they're up and at them. Royals sensing a victory in history here tonight. A very good Royal team this year, 13 and 2. Expected to do well, are doing well. They've come to this holiday tournament here on the east side of town, their west side school. 
and they look like they are going to win it. They won the first game of the tournament, and it looks like they'll win the last That's game. That's right. 9 a.m. on Wednesday they played, and now in the nines on Saturday night they play. Second one, no. Hunter made one out of two. He's got eight points on the night. It is a uh, shot doesn't go. It's almost academic now, another foul. It's going to be Larkin's night. There's a hook right there, McCullum to Ruff. They sense it. History in the making right here on High School Cube. The Larkin Royals, for the first time ever, will win this Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. Again, they have not played it every year, but only in recent times have they done so. But it's history tonight, and they do so, knocking off their counterpart in town, the defending champion Maroon. Great showing from both teams, but Larkin just came out stronger than they ever had before, it seems like. I hadn't seen much of Larkin so far in this tournament, but Larkin seemed to be dominant over this Elgin squad with depth and in every other aspect of this game. It's a good point. They have great depth, and they've had a wonderful season, so you're realizing the choices they have, guard position, and really combos even up front. Well set, 59, 48, 22 seconds remain. Ari Williams. Shoots through the lane, loses the basketball, stolen by Royce, and another foul right there. 16.3. These are great seconds on the clock for the Larkin Royals. They know they're going to win. They're enjoying the moment. Listen to the crowd. That special moment just prior to victory is almost as sweet as the end of the game, isn't it? And like I said, tonight, Elgin's the winner. Good look. Overall, we can't lose. And Elgin team won. Royce. They're going to chant that hey, hey, na, na. Kiss it goodbye. The old song from Steam made famous by Nancy Faust. White Sox games way back when. Good friend of yours. Yeah, and we'll enjoy her work, although she has retired from that. Royce deep made three. one out of two. Ooh. Deep. A very deep three from our Williams. NBA three. Goes in at 28 right there. That's deep for an NBA three. 60 51. It's going to be the academic time. Walk it off. That's it. That's it. Here's the moment. Watch this. Watch the court. Watch the action. Basketball flies up. There, the Royals are celebrating. Larkin wins it. First time ever. You're looking at history. The Larkin Royals winning the Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. The 38th annual. There's the handshakes right there from the Maroons to Larkin. The coach is right there as well. That's Coach Sitter right in front shaking hands. Folks filing out. Special moment it was. 60 to 51. That final in a game that Larkin led all the way through basically there. We're going to take a quick timeout right here and have a half post game for you. So right here in High School Cube, Royals win it by nine. Let's take this timeout right here on High School Cube. for the Larkin Royals. Storm They've the got court. the trophy right there. Dancing around, trophy high above the head. There it is, a moment that has never happened in the 50-year history of Larkin. They have won the Elgin Holiday Basketball Tournament. The school opened in 62. This tournament began in 75. And Larkin, in recent years, staying home to play in this tournament, as we'll get a chance with that. You see the, the great cheering right there. I'm not sure we're a substitute for this great moment right there. But there you have uh, the moment you wait for, the winning of the holiday tournament, and the trophy is yours, guys. What a great uh, tournament. You can't complain. Like I said, Elgin's not a loser at all tonight. The city of Elgin's a winner. Two great teams, two great coaches, two great schools, a lot of great kids. And we can't lose because South Elgin is also a winner in this tournament because of Beacon Academy and this fine group. It's actually a great experience to be out here for everyone here at Beacon Academy. I'm glad that you guys would let us 
come out and do some games here. Oh, we're Absolutely. delighted to have your troops joining us as well. Jeremy Hayes, Mario, thanks to Ben Erickson. And uh, you, young man, uh, congratulations. A couple of play-by-plays you did earlier in the 32-game tournament and then a chance to sit in on history. That's fun. That is great. It was a great time. Overall, I had a very great experience. No matter if I was play-by-play -play next to you, Erickson, my partner, Ed, or even by myself in the booth doing a play-by-play. -play. It was a fantastic experience. Congratulations to all the teams who participated here in this tournament. It was a great show. We're going to try to have some post-game festivity, are we not, Kyle? Yes, right. we're trying to work on that. Again, there's a lot of media here tonight. Coach Carter's always been very uh, mindful of trying to send somebody up, as well as Coach Sinner. We'll wait and see and play it by ear how things go here for us. Uh, and again, now also a lot of players go home and they put their own highlight clips together. You need to put your own highlight clips together. Send them off to various colleges and so forth. So don't forget that. You're a player too. On that's High School Cube, that's so well done. That's great. You're involved in Beacon Academy. That helps you out as well. There we see the crowd. Well, we're, they're still looking at us right here. We're back to crowd shots. There's McCullum. Let's see what we announce on here. In the old days, Kyle, we had an all-tournament team. I think they're doing the all-tournament team right now. They had one last year here listed in the uh, okay. program. So well, that's going to be your duty, Kyle. You're going to go down there and get uh, that I will if you see can. if I can't get that. And uh, that will announce that, of course. Certainly the Allen Twins, we heard from them at halftime of this game. There's our athletic director right there in the middle of things for Elgin High. And it's just a, a good, good moment here as far as that uh, would be concerned and the all-tournament team and a couple of guests will stay here for a while as we try to do that right here on High School Cube. Capture the moment. You know, these moments are so rare. Big games, big house, big crowd, high school level. Great competition, great names. You always remember the Allen Twins here from the Las Vegas School. Ari Williams, his folklore will be forever. And of course, this young Larkin team now at 14 and two, they have a bright young future ahead of them for the rest of this year. Good things could come from that as well. So that's what we have right in front of us here. A lot of history, a lot of future, and a, a good number of folks filing out. Look at that. Folks filing out here at the, the field house at Elgin High School. Federal field house named after the legendary basketball coach and athletic director as well. Then Jim Harrington taking over after that and having a, an all-star career from 85 until the year 2000. But before we talk with folks and look for the all-tournament team, we'll take a timeout. Larkin wins it, 60 to 51. Let's take this timeout on High School Cube. All right, we're back. We've got Coach uh, Darren Carter with us. Sweet night for you, Coach Carter. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was a little, it was a little close there. Uh, those guys play hard. You know, Elgin does a good job. Ari's tough to guard. Uh, our guys kept responding to any run they had. And we're proud of them, man. This is what we wanted. Uh, we started the tournament at nine in the morning. We ended the tournament. Uh, I don't know what time it is, but some probably somewhere around 9:30 at night. There yeah. you go. So uh, this is what we were looking for. So uh, we're real proud of our guys. Well, great battle it is, and uh, brings the whole town together. Mm -hmm. It really does. And just as you always thought. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, before warm-ups, at least me and I'm sure our guys would say the same thing. We weren't thinking of it being a Christmas tournament championship game. We were thinking of it being an Elgin Larkin game. That's and right. and uh, I'm sure the tournament loves it. The city loved it. So. Uh, 
you know, we, we got another one. Uh, we got another one. Yeah, we got another one February 1st here on a Friday night. I'm sure they're going to be waiting for us. Your team is so strong. You've got so many options. It really showed tonight. You've got a lot of bodies, a lot of bodies on the bench as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a they, the, the two seniors, Q and, uh, and Quantis early, were scoring a lot of points. And I think maybe the perception around our league and the area was that we were too, a two-headed monster. And uh, we're a lot more than that. Oh, we're a lot more than that. We don't rely on those guys uh, to do anything other than just play ball. And when they're going, then they'll carry us. But if they're not, we got other guys that can step in. And you were a great guard player in your, your Larkin days. You have so many guard combinations. That's going to make you feel good. Absolutely. I, I've said it all along. Uh, you can't have too many guards. Yeah, no you, way. It's not possible. I At least in my uh, my playing experience and my coaching experience, I've never ran into a team that's had too many. No. So uh, I would love to find one. That's I would love to find well, one. I would love to coach one. So. And, and Derek Sweeney, who's your point guard to start the year, can mm -hmm. come off the bench now. Give you a, yeah, we have, you got fandom right around you right here, young man. You can bring him off the bench and have a lot of fun, can't you? Absolutely. He, I mean, how big was he down the stretch? I mean, so uh, what, what a great kid. He hasn't started lately, uh, but he hasn't pouted about it. And he's made big plays in the last two games that uh, helped carry us to this championship. Coach Carter, you enjoyed your games in the high school cube, haven't you not, sir? Uh, awesome. I really appreciate you guys doing it. It's uh, I can't even put it into words what it means to our program, what it means to the community, what it means to our kids. It's awesome. You guys do a great job. Uh, I, I can't say it enough. I can't say thank you enough. You guys are doing a heck of a job. Well, we're so delighted that you're here and uh, so appreciative of your helpfulness as well mm -hmm. and always talking to us after the game. That is Absolutely. great. Congratulations on thank a great you. night and good work. And we're following you. Of course, all home games will be in High School Cube in January. You're 14-2 and two, right where you wanted to be. <laughs> Got a great stretch run approach to you, young man. Absolutely. We'll get back to work and we'll start back at it second semester. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you. A lot. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach Darren Carter. Good luck, my man. Appreciate that. Hey, we got the trophy. Give me that trophy, will you? Hey, we are. Q, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Mr. Ruff, you are? You Come on right in here. We've got the trophy. we got to give you a headphone. Sorry. We're so excited to see this trophy. We want to hear you as well. Yeah, we are too. Hey, uh, it's got to be a great <coughs> night. Tell me how you feel. Um, I feel great. Uh, we made history. It's the first time that Larkin has ever won this. And it was big playing our crosstown rival. Beating defending champions, the Maroons were. That's extra to it. You held Ari Williams down pretty well. You had a fine game out there. Yeah, Did you guys do anything special? Um, just try to contain Williams and and make the other players uncomfortable by making plays they're not used to making. Well said. Make the other players uncomfortable. That sounds good. Certainly you did that. And you guys <laughs> can throw a lot of guards at the opposition, a lot of combinations, and we saw that a lot. And you, of course, you guys can shoot from outside as well. Yeah, well, our our shots weren't really falling, falling today, but that just mean that we had to take it to the hole, and yeah. that paid off for us. Well, you just kept coming back, kept going the line. You were making the free throws down the stretch. That's always the sign of a winning team. Yes, it is. The team loved this trophy, didn't they? They were gathered around it? Yes, they did. All right. You you'll have a, you had a good Christmas, did you not? I did. You guys are looking forward with a 14-2 and two mark. Tell me what the rest of the season will mean to you. Um, we plan on keeping the same way and just keep winning games. All right. Any extra special feeling about I'm not really stopping Ari Williams, but he looked a little fatigued out there tonight, didn't he? Ari Williams, four games and four nights. Um, yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of guards in our depth that can uh, that can also guard him, so that's good. You kept fresh bodies on him, and it maybe a little wear and tear, four games and four nights. Yeah, and that and fresh body, fresh legs, it always can help. All right, you make player. your you've made your highlight package on High School Cube, haven't you? Go home and do all your highlights. You yeah. can you can create your own, so I want you to do that. All right. I will. All right. Q, we did it rough with us here. Congratulations. Dude. Can, can I keep the trophy? No. Oh, I got to take it back. All right. I had it for a while, though. We got a good shot of it right here is what we have. We got the all-tournament team. Let's see. We'll take a look at that in just a moment here. We will uh, look at this. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're going to congratulate you, young man. Well done, and we'll see you later in the season. We'll see you all through January, okay? All right, thank you. Quentin Ruff, stay right here for just a moment. Let's take a quick time out if we can. We're right back with the all-tournament team right here on High School Cube after this. Yeah, John. 
We are back just like that. Kyle Ball with us right now. And you've got the all tournament team announcing right here, young yes, man. Yes, we do. You're, you're going to help me with a few of the names here. But uh, all tournament team uh, Lou Potnick of Buffalo Grove, Henry Peters, uh, Francis Park, Langdon Neal, also of Francis Parker, actually, I should say, Torian uh, Pearson of Harlan, Isaiah Box from Rockford East, John Fuqua of Walter Lutheran, Brandon Rodriguez of Dundee Crown, Chip Flanagan, Glenbar North, He's a great Justin number Jackson, yep, also Glenbar North. Marcus Allen of Centennial and Malcolm Allen, there's a given, and also Centennial, Mikey Coffey of Batavia, Ari Williams of Elgin, and uh, Ken, uh, excuse me, Kendale McCohen, obviously of Larkin, and Quintus Hunter of Larkin. So there's your all tournament team for 2012, Jeff. All right, Quintus Hunter, Kendall McCollum, Ari Williams, uh, LG representation there. Let me do step out of the view for just a moment. We want to remind everybody, here's how the tournament went. Uh, Clark out of Chicago defeated uh, Islamic Foundation 67-37 for 15th place today. Hoffman Estates 52, Rockford Guilford 50 for 13. It was Buffalo Grove over Team Englewood 64 to 51. Walter Lutheran knocked off Rockford East 68 to 65 for seventh. Harlan over F.W. Parker 61 to 59 consolation championship. Dundee Crown lost to Glenbard North 63 51 for fifth. Batavia, great job for the Bulldogs. Excellent job by the Bulldogs. They knocked off the team from Vegas by 10, 75 65. And right here, the nine point win for the Royals over the Maroons. What a great tournament, as always. Uh, Elgin puts on a great tournament. And again, what better ending than to have the two Elgin teams playing here. And again, South Elgin High School involved with this broadcast. It, it's just a it's a win-win-win situation for U46, the city of Elgin. Great night here and another great uh, opportunity for you. How many uh, tournaments is this? Your 22nd? Uh, I get, we, we're totally back to 23 calendar years, so I, th I guess I could sneak back to a total of 24 tournaments in some form. 24 some form. years this man has been and on radio, TV, and now the internet. I just look over that I, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and Mr., uh, young Mr. Uh, Giese as well. We appreciate that. We're going to get out of here, so our thanks to the great crew that we had, Mario, Ben Erickson, uh, Jeremy Hayes, cast and crew Beacon Academy. We are going to get out of here right now. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next right here. So long.